Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric back again with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over 2019.28.3.1 and specifically navigate on autopilot and how it performs with that. And that's because we went actually to Tyson's Mall, which is the biggest mall I've ever been to, to go to the Peloton store because my wife has been really wanting a Peloton bike. So stay tuned later in the video to see if she actually gets one. So right here, you're gonna see I turn on the turn signal manually to actually move into the right-hand turn lane, and it does work, although it does take a little bit of extra time. Wait, is that a Tesla? Okay, frantic hand wave, hurry everybody, frantic. So they didn't wave back. Light turns green, we're gonna see if it makes a left-hand turn. There's not a lot of lane markings, and I had to take over. But again, it's not designed for that. If you're new to this channel, if you haven't seen my YouTube channel yet, um, welcome, first of all. And whenever you see that blue circle there, a blue steering wheel at the center display and that blue line moving forward there, that single blue line or two blue lines on the side, that tells you that the car is driving itself. Now that single blue line is navigate on autopilot. So you see the car doing navigate on autopilot here. Yes, my hands are on the steering wheel, but this lane change that it's about to take here is done all by the car. The car makes that decision. Oh, oh wait, we have another one coming up. Frantic hand wave, frantic hand wave of red Model X. Oh, yes, and I got a wave back from those people, which is awesome. Whenever you see a test on the road, make sure you wave. And if you're in autopilot, do a quick double hand wave. So we are going to do another lane change here to the right hand side. And you can see, like I was saying before that Model X came up, uh, that the car is going to make these decisions by itself. And we know that when there's one blue line moving forward, meaning we are in navigate on autopilot versus regular autopilot is two blue lines, like you saw in the very first part of this video. So you see really smooth here with this new software update, taking this exit ramp, actually it has a quite big curves on this exit ramp with some construction on the right hand side and navigate on autopilot under this new software update does a really great job. So let's watch this curve here as we come up to this construction. Now that's a long exit ramp getting onto another major highway. The one thing I would like you to see here is try to make a lane change to the left lane, um, but it just kind of rides this lane out until it ends and gets a little close to that concrete barrier over there and just kind of just comes right over. Now I as a driver was watching making sure there was nobody there and there wasn't and it did the similar thing here. So at least it didn't hit the concrete barrier although that's a room for improvement for the next software update. So here we have it uh, detecting that van and then it kind of went back and forth for a second like okay. Oh I think that was the car right there was actually speeding up in the, in the lane the right next to us and that's why it was kind of hesitant on moving over. So we got our turn signal on, it's going to wait until it is completely clear. You see a couple red cars coming up and as soon as that red car is gone and turns to a gray car, then the car, the autopilot, knows that it's able to move over a lane. So that's navigate on autopilot deciding what lane to be in. So that is done via settings in your car as long as navigate on autopilot is turned on and you can make the lane changes more and more aggressive. So you can see I'm now all the way over in the left-hand lane and that's probably because I have the most aggressive lane change setting on Mad Max mode. Now I did notice that it wanted to take a left exit up here which is a toll so avoid tolls was not on and as soon as I turn that on you can see that it actually changed the GPS on my map instantly and the car wants to get over because I know I've been on this road before that the car needs to make a right exit off of this interstate highway here. So the car immediately reroutes the navigation because I put on avoid tolls, which is super smart. So the car knows it's getting over and you can see it's already worked over two lanes now. So we'll speed this up a bit until we get to our exit, which is this right turn right here and it missed uh, what? that turn. So there was some construction and it's a little bit new. There's another view of that but it did, however, miss the turn. Just remember to pay attention, this is not 100%. This is why Tesla still shows this as a beta software. It's still learning, it's 
rapidly improving and it's gotten so much better than when it was first released and this software update is another step in the right direction. So here's another change coming up to the left hand side, a lane change, and you can see that that truck was illuminated in red until it was clear to go and it was turned to a gray color and then the car moved over. Really super smooth. So we're getting off the highway here and we're finally almost to Tyson's Mall. And what I'm really excited about is this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, but definitely one of the biggest destination chargers ever. And I haven't seen it, I've only seen pictures, and I've never been to this mall, although it is pretty close to my house, I just don't make my way over there. But let's pull into the parking garage and check out just how huge this destination charger is. Wow. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, a lot of chargers here. So all destination chargers, not superchargers, just destination chargers, and you can see it's filling up rapidly. We have a white Model 3, just like mine, except it's got the more expensive rims. <laughs> Getting ready to park as well, so really glad we found a parking spot, and then you have another Model S right here waiting to get a parking spot as well. So very, very popular charger. So we get out of the car, and I mean, there's still a couple spots left, but it's filling up rapidly, and then we have my car charging right here using the destination charger. Wasn't that fast, but still, free juice is great. I mean, can't really complain about free juice at all. Just really awesome that a mall is gonna support Tesla in this way and definitely draws owners, Tesla owners, to this mall. Now this is a really fancy, I would say, upscale mall. We don't go here very often, but Peloton is here and we wanted to try out the bike. My wife has really, really wanted this bike. We tried it out, it was really awesome. Um, we head back to the destination chargers and they are completely full. So actually when we were pulling out of here, there was somebody else waiting for our spot. So they were probably annoyed because I was taking my time filming, but I definitely had to get some video of this huge group of destination chargers. And you can see that other Model 3 is actually waiting for me to pull out. They have their blinker on over there. So all this to say, the Peloton bike, I was very skeptical because it does cost a lot of money, but way, way better than any other exercise bike, spin bike out there. So I don't like buying new things, so I told my wife she needs to look at other options like a used Peloton bike. All right, let's jump back to the car now. We are in Navigate on Autopilot again, blue circle, straight blue line going forward and you can see that the car is thinking about making a lane change over to the left and it's very hesitant it is very cautious stuttering a couple of times you can see the wheel turn and then it kind of turns back now it's just out of road so it's just going to take the lane and i think that's because of the speed that we were traveling or it could have been cars in another lane so when we get on this road, it does take an exit that is very similar to the one that it failed on previously in the video. So happy to see that that was kind of like a one-off. Is that another gray Model 3? Okay, here we go, double hand frantic wave. Oh, no, they didn't see us. Okay. So we're in the left-hand lane, navigate on autopilot is on. And just a pro tip for you guys, if you turn off use HOV lanes and you're on a HOV lane similar to this one, it will not use the HOV lane. So just make sure you know that if you're trying to think of why the car isn't going into the left lane, there's a lot of places in the US and in other countries that have high occupancy vehicle lanes and it will not use that lane if that settings turn off. So navigate on autopilot here, taking a left exit and does it really smooth. I really like how it gets right over as soon as that turn lane starts. So as soon as we get home, we pull into the driveway and it's only a couple minutes goes by and my wife is already on the Facebook group and she has found someone in DC with a bike in their basement and is able to meet today and they said it's like new, it's everything that she wanted and it's got the shoes and it's got everything. 
Thanks so much, Facebook. Now I gotta drive all the way to DC. So why don't you guys hop in and join me? So we're in the Model 3 still driving to DC. I took my Model 3 versus the Model X knowing that the bike wouldn't fit in the Model 3. Yeah, I had time for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So we are in autopilot here and navigate on autopilot is gonna switch in as soon as we get a little bit further ahead. You can see there's two blue lines and it's gonna switch right here to one single blue line. So it's autopilot to navigate on autopilot. So two blue lines, regular autopilot to one blue line navigate on autopilot and you can see it's doing a great job on this curvy entrance ramp onto this major highway okay so back to why i took the model 3 versus the model x knowing that the bike would not fit in the trunk of the model 3 i wanted to go and check this out i didn't want some creepy no. craigslisty type deal going down so i did take the model 3 down there knowing that if we wanted this bike we were going to have to make an additional trip so here we are navigating on autopilot, exiting one road, one highway to another highway. And it's doing a great job, even with these shadows. In previous software updates, I know that the shadows would really throw off the car, but they've definitely mastered that. And that's really evident if you haven't seen my Kirby Country Road Test, where there's a ton of different shadows and lights going through trees. So that was relatively easy for the car to navigate through. So navigate on autopilot here, still driving. You can see that blue circle with a single blue line moving forward, and it is gonna make its own lane change to enter this other highway. So highway to highway, zero driver input. So it is deciding that it wants to turn and get over a lane. So it transitions over, it realizes that it's clear, and we successfully get over a lane. Now we have another lane change coming up, and it's gonna move over a lane and it does a great job. So I wanna say that there are a couple times where it wants to get over and I feel like, I'm just like, no, I don't wanna get in that lane right now or it's trying to get behind like a slow truck or something like that. And that's when navigate on autopilot can be a little bit frustrating as far as the decision-making goes with what lane it's supposed to be in. So if you are a regular driver or if you just pay attention to traffic, you know, you're not gonna wanna get over to the right-hand lane if you see a bunch of people entering the highway at that particular point. Whereas navigate on autopilot's just strictly looking at the cars in front of you and in other lanes, so it might not make the same choice that you would. But I know you guys have heard me say this before, and if you don't have autopilot and you're thinking about purchasing it, or I guess if you have a newer Model 3 and you have just regular autopilot and you're thinking about purchasing the FSD upgrade, the software upgrade, autopilot period or FSD with Navigate on Autopilot is a lifesaver if you drive or you commute daily in traffic. I'm sure the stress of driving in traffic similar to this takes years off your life. Do yourself a favor if you don't have any autopilot and upgrade. If you have the money to spend, get FSD. So we moved over to the left lane and now the car wants to make a lane change to the right. And it's able to do that relatively easy even though we're in a heavier traffic. And so as we start to get deeper into DC, we get on some roads that I'm not familiar with. So definitely having autopilot is nice. So here a car was in our blind spot, but the Tesla was speeding up and able to pass it. So we're free from traffic here, driving near the Pentagon, and we are going to, it for some reason wanted me to be in this far right lane, even though I knew that this lane ended. For, and it made me change lanes over into this right lane for whatever reason, even though it ends right here and I do have to take over. So again, this is a beta system, make sure you're paying attention whenever you're using autopilot or navigating autopilot. So you see that car kind of transition in here and I will say it's very courteous and also it's able to drive in really, really tight, tight lanes. So you can see how tight this is with that barrier there. And it does a great job. This is very much city driving on this smaller road. I did do a manual lane change because you can tell here, rather than one lane moving, one blue line forward, I have two blue lines on either side 
saying that I'm only in regular autopilot. So the car is not gonna make lane changes, but I can manually make lane changes using my turn signal. So the car is in autopilot driving down this road. I can make any lane change that I want, but the car is driving itself right now. You can tell that by the blue steering wheel and the two blue lines. No lane changes are gonna happen here because Navigate on Autopilot only works on bigger highways or roads without stoplights or you know any type of bigger interstate. So we're, we're coming up to our exit here and it's not gonna take the exit for us. Now we do have like a little exit ramp here and that's because we're not in Navigate on Autopilot. For whatever reason, Navigate on Autopilot is not available on that little stretch of road. So we're getting closer to the house where this Peloton bike is. I'm tired, but I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in me, so I'll be just fine. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys own a Tesla and you live in a city. Cause I'm really curious, like if you only have street parking like these people right here, where do you charge your car? And that's definitely a problem that is, I'm sure very relevant to a lot of people. So let me know down in the comment section below if you do have a Tesla and you live in the city and you only have street parking. So we're gonna park the car here and hop up these steps right here to where the person lives. And these are their actual steps. And I'm gonna go check out this bike that's in their basement. So the bike is literally brand new. Very rich couple who got on the bike, I think bought it on a whim with some weekend chump change but literally it looked like the bike had never been used. So immediately I'm like, yes, I'll buy it. And I give them a deposit and tell them that I will be back later that evening. I really didn't think it was gonna go that smooth. Literally these people had assistants that were willing to carry the bike outside into my car, but I told them that it doesn't fit. So they said, just come back and one of my assistants will help you carry to your car, which was really cool and definitely got to see how the other half live so right here check this out this shadow knocks out navigate on autopilot and so it says take over immediately there's no navigate on autopilot there because that shadow with the intense glare so just as i said previously in the video that these shadows are solved there's an example where again tesla's chasing the nines and there's so many different scenarios where right there, it said take over immediately with that really dark shadow. So always pay attention, always keep your hands on the wheel, just like I try to do, and just like Tesla recommends. So we're in Navigate on Autopilot, I'm heading back home to get the Model X so I can go pick up this Peloton bike. And here's what I'm talking about where it's just kind of annoying and the car just wants to make lane changes and you can see if you tap that blue bar up there on the screen, you can actually cancel the lane change if you want to, which is a nice feature that Tesla added. And with that lane change, it looks like the autopilot or the navigate on autopilot is not going to miss my exit this time. So right now we are only one for three as far as misses of exits. And here's another fork and it takes the correct fork. So really impressive. So as soon as I make it home, I don't have time for another peanut butter jelly, but I do have time to grab the Model X real quick and throw a couple pillows in there to rest the bike on. And we immediately turn on regular autopilot. You can see the screen is a little bit different in the Model X with the user interface behind the steering wheel and in the center console. So we're in regular autopilot here and even this hardware 2.0 2016 Model X with FSD purchased so it will be upgraded, but even the older computer is able to navigate those curvy roads and the highway. So we make it there. Yes, street parking only. Still really curious to know if you guys only have street parking. So definitely leave a comment below. Where do you charge? I don't know. I guess it only superchargers. So here we are. We are gonna pick up the bike with help from these assistants, which is really nice. And everybody was super cool. Even the super rich guy, they helped me get it in the car. And as you can see, there's just tons of room. I put the screen up front and the bike fits easily in the back of the Model X. So the Model Y is gonna be sweet because the reason why it wouldn't fit in a three is because of the base of the bike would not fit through the trunk opening. It's in here, it's done. 
I'm on my way back home. We're in Navigate on Autopilot in the Hardware 2.0 Model X. And coming from a Model 3, I have to say I like the Model 3 interior better. So I am in Navigate on Autopilot and you have to pull the Autopilot stock forward to confirm the lane changes in the Model X because my wife doesn't like the automatic lane changes where the car just automatically makes the lane change. There's the bike, it's still good. Now we're just in regular autopilot and I will say you can disengage similar to the Model 3 lifting up on the drive stock, but just be careful that you don't shift it into neutral by accident. That did happen to me as I was used to engaging and disengage using one stock in the Model 3. I get the bike home and it's phenomenal. I did try it. And if you guys have a Peloton, get at me. I'm on there at all electric with no spaces. If you guys wanna buy a Peloton bike, you can save a hundred bucks by using this referral code. Keep in mind, it only works for the first 12 people that use it. I'll leave that down in the description for you. If you wanna see all the products that I use to make these YouTube videos and all the products that I recommend, check out my Amazon shop. The link will be down in the description. If you like this channel and you like the videos, please consider going over to Patreon and supporting this channel for as little as $1 a month. Thank you so much to all of you that have already gone over there and decided to support this channel. It really does mean a lot. I couldn't do this without you guys. There's so much great content specifically to Patreon, so make sure you go over there and check it out. Patrons at higher tiers also get early access to YouTube videos. I want to give a special shout out to our man Amin and Akram Atul. They are both supporting me at the all electric level. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Share this video with a friend and I will see you guys in the next one.